Oh, right. So, after a short break, we are back. Now, what I did while the camera was off was tested this peg one more time. Found out it was still too high, so I shaved all the way down flat. Now, when I tested it, actually, I test fitted it before I shed that bag off. It did work. It was it was close enough that if I put the screws in, it would tighten down properly. However, it was very tight on that. And this really is powered by nothing more than a spring, right? And if this wheel goes around, it knocks it out. And this tried to reverse, you destroy your gears, which I am now using expensive ones, not cheap ones. So, essentially there's nothing more that needs to be done. I can put this gun back together. Now I've also, as you heard earlier, plastic welded this. I don't think it's going to hold. I don't expect it to hold. I don't care. Okay. Anyways. So I have the M120 and the spring guide as well as this all lined up and working beautifully. I'm just going to turn this. That will be put in the track, so don't worry if it jumps out. It has its own track. That up and this will grab and function through. It's not very well on the teeth, but that's because it's not in place. It holds much better that way. And let go, so this is fly forward and this is too back. But it works. Okay, it's functional. So let's put it back together and see what happens. Now I'm going to make sure that this piece fits before we go to put it back together. Okay, fixing that side beautifully. Does it fit in this side? Beautiful. Yes, it does. Awesome. So, we want to put that back on there. This in there. Now, this is the cool part. This tells us whether we're going to make or break this gun. It's because this is the most tension spring that has probably ever been in the gearbox like this. That I know. And this back piece could just snap off at any moment. So I'm going to probably should put out there now. But I didn't and I'm not releasing it yet. The more stress you put, the more chances for it to fail. So let's just make sure all of this closes nice and beautiful. And then I need that Allen key again. Okay, and my anti-reversal latch has lined up perfectly. Make sure that falls into its track when you go to put this together. But you want to move the gears just little bits until you get them to line up and sink in their holes. That did fall in. Perfect. So, congratulations. I now have a Walmart gun in a case that has no... Or, uh, sorry, an SRC gun in a case that has no reason to be in. But! I'm excited. So, let's put it together. Let's put it in the rifle. And see what we can get. You know, I'm just doing a final check to make sure things were clear. But, let's tighten this lid down before it lets go. Just because I don't want it. So, so far, that cracked gearbox is holding together. Now, once I tighten all this down, the first shot is going to be the true test. Now, I'm going to do something I probably shouldn't, considering this gearbox. Um, I'm going to use my SRC motor. Why? Because the gears are designed to work together. They are the right amount of teeth. They are essentially they are the matched gear. 
we changed the pinion gear on my motor. Motor's gear because it was weak. So we changed it out to make it a stronger one. So now the only weak point in this gun is essentially the whole case. And because this has no bearings, which just because this just all sits there, we could have a problem. Now I would love to test this before I put the motor in it, but I am not strong enough to actually turn that gear back and pull that spring. So and it is seated quite nicely, so I expect to grind a little bit when we start. Should be nothing too serious. As the dimensions of this gearbox and my gearbox are actually quite close, obviously there's the Walmart cheap out things like no bearings, none of that, which I have not installed either. So I could have cut them out and put the bearings in. It would definitely increase the life of this gearbox, even though it's clear stuff. Definitely increase the life because it wouldn't be turning in plastic. It would be turning in freaking metal bearings. But I am far too lazy to do such things. No going. As for lube, I left the lube that was on them, and I can actually lube these from the outside. But we're going to see what happens. This is. What's that? What the little series I would like to call. I don't know if I'm going to. But I would like to call. Testing A17. Let's see how far we can push it. Alright, so I'm not going to test it normally. I am going to put it in the case before I test it, which is not normal. Because normally I would take my motor and all its mounts and stuff screw it on right now, connect it to a battery, and pull the trigger to see if it would just go off. Right? Make sure that you don't get any grinding right off the bat. But I've noticed when doing that, that it really is just a waste of time because once you put it in the case, how tight the gearbox is held completely changes. So we're just going to go straight ahead and put it right in that case. In which it fitting well. Not perfect, but well. Now, this is probably the most important part of putting this gun back together, is putting the set pin in first. The reason why is the set pin holds the gearbox. Now, keep in mind this gearbox is not designed for this case, so it will be stiff. My old, my SRC's was too. Now, if I hit this with a hammer though, this will probably break the case rather than go in. Because my old case was metal, it didn't matter. It would go in and drag. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put the rear body pin in to hold it. Now, keep in mind, this case, this Walmart gearbox is a little bit bigger, it's a little bit more bulky. It's not exactly the right shape to fit right here. So. It's very stiff to get in. Now, what I found is that it gives you a tighter running gun, but it does change where stress is put. Oh, I got it. Well, you're about to have to hit the hammer to get in. Probably going to have to do the same with this. Anyway, as I was saying, that doesn't surprise me. So I have to do this with another one too. There we go. Now, notice I didn't just take a wailing swing at it. I tapped it into place. Don't just swing. You're just going to break it right off the bat. Be nice to it. Keep in mind, it is a Clearsoft Walmart gearbox. It's not a box that you want to part with. Okay, now that set pin, you probably you can't see that. I know you can't, but it lines up. 
and I'm looking for it to make sure that the hole is a circle all the way around. It's not an oval in the middle, which it is. Now, you're probably going to have to do a bit of squeezing, a bit of pushing, and as you, you probably can't see it, but in there it's silver now. Can well, then good for you. And just to make sure it's fine. It's in nice and good. Okay. So I'll put that in. And there you are. You have a clear soft gearbox inside of all. Very, very nice gun. I actually expect this to break first shot. Just FYI. Let's put the mag catch in. Now, I'm not going to be using the Walmart's um, pop up unit. It does work, it just does not work with e mags. It will work with normal mags, but it will not work with your e mags. And the reason why is because it's actually wrong. Now this is a little bit tighter, the plastic is in a different spot. I may have to use the plastic um, mag catch in order to get this to work. I wouldn't be surprised if I do. As you can probably see, that's very, very tight. I'm only going to do one pull this time. Normally I do two. It's a good seated, but really, really tight. We're going to leave that alone. Especially because I don't want to break that tab right there off, which is what holds that spring and keeps this spring loaded so that your mags don't just, when you put them in, they don't just go fall out. Otherwise, you'll have to hold your gun pretty much like that in order to keep it in. So, we don't want to do that. That, that would just end that. Okay, so, we have our positive and my negative. And then, we have this motor, which is probably going to be what screws this part, this entire project over. This motor, right here. Why? This motor is incredibly powerful. As I was saying, it is a very good motor. And it is very hard to turn. Which indicates the magnets in it are quite strong. Now, just to give you an idea. I'm going to be right there and it doesn't even pick it up. This one. Much more powerful. Much stronger motor. Um, it is probably going to be what breaks this guy. I can tell you that now. But I don't care, as I've said numerous times. So, I'm going to put the wire through. Now, it's very important in here that you run the wire so that the motor can sit down in there nice and flat. Ideally what you want is you want it to be able to compress this as much as possible so that it holds it nice and tight so that it doesn't jump around all the time. And in order to do that, I didn't even think... Oh, it does fit. Alright. Now, when you're putting this on, don't, don't go crazy. Tighten it. Just keep in mind, you are going to be putting your hand on it, but don't... Go over it. Don't tighten it to the point where you crack the case of the gun. That's I've seen. I've watched a couple of videos and I've seen people do that, and I go, "You went too tight." Now I'm using a Walmart gearbox, so especially the plastic in this gearbox is really not all that good. It is not like a normal plastic gearbox from a $500 gun or. Well, nowadays, two hundred dollars at the most. Like, even the lucid ones have metal gearboxes. Okay, now, this is going to wiggle a little bit. It is a Walmart gearbox. They're not going to tighten very nice. Now, keep in mind, this is just a uh, in-between gun. All I did was put those two screws in there. Um, 
They do have a tack light, I can't show you. Okay, now as you can see right now, you see the gap is not lined up. Not well. But this is sturdy. It isn't wobbling at all, so I'm not too worried. So, but here, I'll show you the insides. Let's see if I can get that as close without hitting the camera as I can. The gears way down in that bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. I'm sorry if you can't, but there's the two little screws and then your wires come out. So. that part down. Alright, well, let's just make sure the safety works. See, this is where the lining is going to be an issue. See, this. Actually, it's not turning with the safety, it's actually turning on the safety. And because of the nature of this gearbox, I do need full eye. Um, the reason why is because this gearbox tends to jam, from what I've heard. Now, I am using my stuff. My motor is more than powerful enough on semi, it should be able to turn itself over with that little short burst, but we're going to open it up again and look. Now, this is a bunch of trial and error, so I'm going to shut the camera off while I pull this apart, because we've already seen, well, no, we haven't actually seen this, so okay, I'll leave it on. So, when you take your gun apart, you're going to have to take the bottom screws out of that. Once that plate comes off, you disconnect these. On the Walmart gun, you will have to unsolder them. They are soldered directly to the motor, whereas these have connectors. Another reason why I wanted this wiring set. I can put the connectors on the other one, but that's kind of a pain in the ass. And when you're pulling these out, or whatever gun you broke that you're getting parts from, be sure that you don't break the connectors off. I just I did that once. I was not impressing myself. Okay, now. This set pin does have to come out, but let's do the mag release first. So if you want to push it through, you have a G and G. And then you're going to have to pull this side up and turn it. Now, as I said, this is very, very stiff. This is very hard. So just have a little bit of patience with it. Now, I would say don't pull it all the way out on that side because then this button has a spring for this button so it has a chance to go flying. Do that and then take this button off. Put the button down. And now just so that you don't lose parts. Just give it back. Now you won't lose it. Okay, now the set pin has to come off. shouldn't take too much force. It should be just a push. You, know, you might want to push it through with something. Just because it is going to be very, very stiff. Especially with this gearbox. Okay, I need that star ball. So I'll break the counter here. If you're using a good motor, just use it to collect parts. Works very